Target audience is 13 and up. Welcome back, guys. Today, we are talking about the Saint Shields and a couple unreleased Beyblades. So we've got Shark Rash, Vanishing Moot, and Vortex Ape. So these three Beyblades were never released. Flash Leopard is the only one in this that was. So before we get into the history in these characters, all of these Beyblades were made by Benchblade. They look amazing. They're very cool. Uh, very close to what you would see from like an official release. Um, a little bit more fragile than the standard Takara Tomy releases, mostly because of the attack ring designs. So for these, I do recommend replacing the weight discs that come with these with either like 10 wide, wide survive, wide defense, um, even the MagnaCore weight discs because uh, Shark Crash, the way it's designed, the points are pretty thin so they can snap off especially moving in right spin if something catches that it can shear it straight off um, so you could try to put it into left spin as well um, all of the parts are swappable some of them can be a little bit tight um, and then same thing with vanishing moot it's a little thicker so I'm not as concerned with that snapping off but for shark rash for sure um, I would swap it to left spin or put a wider weight disc on it for sure we will do some battles hopefully nothing snaps uh, but for a display piece, these are amazing just to have the full St. Shields team. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the St. Shields. So first up, we've got Ozuma, the owner of Flash Leopard, who shows up in the first episode of the second season of Bakuten Shoot, Bakuten Shoot 2002, or V-Force as it's known in the West. So Tyson is coming off of the high of winning the world championship in the previous season. He's super cocky in the first episode and is going to a local tournament where Azuma shows up and absolutely beats the snot out of him. This leaves Tyson pretty shocked. He's very confused as to why he just lost to this random stranger that he's never heard of, didn't see him at the world championship, and just showed up at this local tournament and absolutely destroyed him. And this sort of segues into the first arc of V-Force. Your name's Max, right? You're the Beyblade world champ? That's right, I am. So you're the one. A fan, that's great. Can I challenge you to a Beyblade match? In the following episode, separate from Tyson, Max ends up getting challenged by another member of the Saint Shields named Miriam, the owner of Shark Rash. And Ray, back at his home village, also gets challenged by a member of the Saint Shields, Joseph, the owner of Vanishing Moot. While all this is happening, Tyson's still freaking out because he lost. Kenny's trying to do research to figure out who these people are, and we haven't seen Kai yet or seen what he's been up to. A couple episodes later, after Tyson, Hillary, and Kenny almost end up getting crushed to death, burned to death, and Dragoon almost getting stolen, Kai separately gets challenged by Dunga. Kai, at this point, has basically given up Beyblade. As Kai escapes, he does end up grabbing his Dronzer, and at this point, the whole gang decides to converge and meet up to figure out what's going on. As the season progresses, we end up finding out that the Saint Shield's goal is to try to capture the Blade Breaker's Bit Beasts. So the Saint Shields are basically guardians of the Sacred Spirits, or the Bit Beasts, uh, which have been used for evil in the past. So their goal is to try to capture them to basically maintain peace and remain guardians over these sacred spirits. They do end up capturing Drigger, and during the course of this series, they end up finding out that the sacred beasts are actually in pretty good hands, so they kind of leave them at that, and uh, they, they stop basically hunting them down. The Saint Shields do end up maintaining a presence in the series after this, though. They do end up entering the World Championships and fighting against the Blade Breakers uh, during that whole arc of the season. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much because I do highly recommend that you guys watch Bakuten Shoot. Uh, some people don't care for V-Force that much, but it has a lot of really interesting arcs that I think are definitely worth watching. Uh, but with all of that being said, if you guys want to check it out, uh, most of the series, I think, is on YouTube. Uh, I know it is for Western audiences. I know YouTube can we be weird and some stuff may not be available, but if you use like something like a VPN or something, you can probably watch it on there. 
otherwise, let's go ahead and do some battles with these reproduction uh, Beyblades. I guess they're technically not reproductions because they were never made. But uh, again, these are from Benchblade. I'll have a link down in the description below where you guys can grab these if you still has them in stock. All right, and for these battles, we're gonna go ahead and pair up everything according to the first encounters uh, for these characters in the second season, V-Force. So we'll have Dragoon V versus Flash Leopard. We'll do Vortex 8 versus Dronzer F. We'll do Drigger F versus Vanishing Moot. And we will do Shark Rash versus Dracil F. So, first up, we'll do Flash Leopard versus Dragoon V. Flash Leopard takes the first round. And Flash Leopard takes it, just like the anime. Next up, we will do Drigger F versus Vanishing Moot. So, like I said, Vanishing Moot is very recoil prone, so hopefully it doesn't break. Got a tie for the second round. The last one goes to Vanishing Moot. That is two wins now for the Saint Shields. Let's go ahead and do Dronzer versus Vortex 8. Dronzer is on the flat tip. point for Dronzer. My big shit popped off, but that is still a point for Dronzer, so we are tied up. So it looks like the little tab broke off on the attack ring, actually on both sides, which is like not super common. Now this was a very worn Dronzer F, so kind of sad, but life goes on. So let's go to the next round. That is another point for the St. Shields. Are they gonna go 4-0? Oh. So we've got Dracil F versus Shark Rash. Please don't break Shark Rash because I wanna put this, I wanna put these St. Shield Beyblades on display after this video. And uh, I would prefer for the, uh, for the Shark Rash to not break. Dracil is like not particularly aggro, so it shouldn't be too bad, but let's see what happens. Dracil's losing balls. All right, I went ahead and replaced the clips on these for some tighter ones, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. Like shark crashed me. Let's do one more for good measure. Oh, 
All right, so Shark Rash takes it. Looks like it's still in one piece, thankfully. So all of these St. Shield Beyblades will probably go into some sort of small case if I can find one. And these will go on display on my shelf. I think these are super cool. Again, if you guys want them, you can get them uh, down uh, at Bench Plate Shop. I'll have a link down in the description. Um, hit the like for the algorithm. Drop a comment letting me know which one of these three is your favorite. I'm going with Shark Rash. It's just such a cool design aesthetically. Uh, I wish they would have produced it. They could easily fix this fragility issue by just filling in this gap right here underneath. So not necessarily fill the top, but just make a bridge sort of like maybe halfway down. And that I think that would solve a lot of the fragility issues. Yeah, again, hit that hit that like for me breaking the tabs on this Dragoon F uh, attack ring. That's kind of sad. It already had some stress marks before. This was one that I'd gotten in a used lot. So, you know, it was bound to happen eventually. But uh, you know, that is that is one for the one for the books. Still usable. Just can't use the uh, can't use a bit chip in it unless I glue one in there. So um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.